This is Tiffany Rosier, the host of the Afros and Nice podcast. We use the Anchor podcasting app to create and distribute the show. Creating a podcast on Anchor is effortless. It allows you to record a high-quality podcast and distribute it everywhere, including Google Podcast and Apple Podcast. They distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. No fancy equipment or podcasting experience is necessary, and it's 100% free. As long as you have a story to tell, Anchor is the platform to use. Share your story through audio using the Anchor app for audio, for Android, iPhone, or your desktop. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Welcome back to the Afros and Ice podcast. I am your host, Tiffany Rozier, and joining the conversation this week is kitchen manager and head chef of the St. James School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Deborah Anthony. I met Deborah when I worked for the Vetri Community Partnership. I led the kitchen at Girard College in the summer for the collaboration between Vetri and the ESF Dream Camp Foundation. As soon as I met Deborah, I knew she was the heart and soul of the kitchen and one of the most talented chefs I have ever known. And during our conversation today, we are going to be talking about Deborah's work feeding kids all across the city of Philadelphia. She has been engaged in this noble labor for such a long time. She has a generous heart and a kind spirit, and she does what I consider the most important job in food. Be sure to connect with the St. James School online at stjamesphila.org. So that's St. James, P-H-I-L-A dot org. There are plenty of opportunities to donate and volunteer to the school. And Chef Debbie and I are working on getting some of her recipes into a digital space so they are available to everyone. And I'm still talking her into bottling and selling her salad dressings, which are incredible. Thank you to all of Afros and Knives Patreon, Patreon members for supporting this episode. Your generosity is deeply felt and appreciated. And now for this week's inspiration, it comes from the incomparable Alice Waters. She says, I really, I really am at a place where I think we need to feed every child at school for free and feed them a real school lunch that's sustainable and nutritious and delicious. It needs to be part of the curriculum of the school in the same way that physical education was part of the curriculum and all children participated. And now let's get into this episode. I'm Deborah Anthony, a.k.a. Chef Anthony at St. James School. How I got into food service, my grandmother was a chef and my mother always cooked all the time. And it was just like more so like hands on. I would always create stuff and everything I would create, I would write it down. It just seemed like everything that I would do would be delicious. So I ended up working at Gerard College and I wasn't going there to work in the kitchen. I was going for an office job. But however I ended up in the kitchen, I ended up really, really liking it. And it's funny because I started out as a server at the college and then was two cooks there, Daryl and uh I can't even call his name. But anyway, Daryl mainly, he was always bringing me in the kitchen and I was helping him out. And then I was just doing things and he was like, wow, you need to be here in the kitchen. So I ended up in the kitchen and I was a cook's helper for a minute. And then every manager that would come, they really liked the food that I was doing and how well I was doing it, how safe I was preparing stuff and how creative I was. Even the president of the school, she wouldn't even allow the other cooks to do her caterings. If I wasn't there, she would go out somewhere and eat. So, however, I ended up being the morning cook there. And it took off from there. So then we ended up with the dream camp. They were coming over the summers for five years. And um, every year they would come. My managers in the other building where the camp wasn't being held would send me down and a few other people that worked there down there to help out with the dream camp. But they sent me down as the supervisor 
to supervise them, to make sure the food was going well. And the, the, the people, quite like yourself, that had came near and was doing the, the meals, you know, to help you out. And, to you know, to, even if you needed to order stuff or to, it just basically to keep our workers in line and keep the program running straight. So now Mark Vetri and and his crew, they were coming in from time to time. So then Mark had saw, like I, I, he saw that I was making like all different kinds of salads and stuff that he really, he liked. And then I was doing salad dressings from scratch. And he was like really amazed at that. And that's when he started asking me, come on, I need you to come and open a school for me. Come and work for me, for work for us and open up a school so you could, you know, teach the kids to work, I mean, to eat healthy and eat right. Also to teach them etiquette at the table so that they could sit, you know, and have family style. Because a lot of kids usually eat from their lap, you know, or out of a restaurant or a fast food joint, corner store, stuff like that. So what I did like that, because I, I have grandkids, you know, and I wanted them to eat right, too. Well, however, they all followed my footsteps, so they're they're all cooking and and everything. And for five years, backing up, if that makes sense. (laughs) The first year, I said, nope, 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 because I'm here at this job. I mean, I'm safe here. I'm in a union. I'm getting paid every two weeks. I don't have to start over, worry about benefits and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I'm not leaving Gerard. I felt it was my safe place. So the second year, the third year, the fourth year, he the same thing. And I kept telling him no. So then while I'm at still at Gerard, I'm still getting like people coming in and, and seeing the salad bar that I would do both salad bars in both buildings. And we had like a very long salad bar and every last one, the things was filled up. I did the jelly trays and everything for both buildings. People will come in. I ended up being a, a grandma yay or something like that as far as doing the salad bar and the deli bar and then I, they wrote things up about me in the newspaper and I won the chef of the month and and things was doing good so then the fifth year I think I met you you and Brandon and and that's where I became con- y'all come on saying and Brandon you come on you gotta come and open up the school you gotta come and open up the school for us I mean, for it. And I kept on saying no. And then I I thought about it. Then I prayed about it. I said, you know what? I'm going to go because now at this point, I'm becoming uncomfortable with Gerard College. Things was not as stable as it used to be. I was like, you know, I love my job and everything, but maybe it is time for me to move on to do something different. So... I got the small, it's a small kitchen, but it's everything that I need to feed 120 children and adults every day. Wow. And, wow. And it's just me. I do it all by myself. No. Oh, oh, what? Yes, I do. All by myself. Okay. 120. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and, ma'am. Yep. And more. And and when we do the graduations and special functions and stuff like that, I'm doing up to from 300 to 500 people. And I do that all by myself. Goodness. I do all the cooking, all the cooking. I do myself. I do caterings there for the school. They uh, Sometimes I have 90 people catering and it's like, and then every week, I mean, every month I do a, of a family meeting catering. Okay. And then I also do the catering for Sunday mass every Sunday. Oh my goodness. Okay. And so the, so St. Mm-hmm. James is a private Catholic school, yeah. high school or yeah. primary school? Uh, it's sort of private and it's a nonprofit Episcopal school. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And it's like mainly for kids you know, it's not as fortunate as most kids. Okay. So what we do, so, you know, we make sure that they have their meals, they have their breakfast. I needed to take Vetri out of 
the picture because what I needed to do was be able to create my own menus and, you know, like rearrange them somehow. And so I'm the only cook there and it's not like possible if something didn't come in right. that, um, uh, you know, I could run out and get something. So, you know, I would, I always was creative enough to go in and do a menu. Wow. So, I mean, we still use some of their menus, which they allowed us to, but a lot of them, I could tweak them. And then I have days like maybe once a month, it'll be a, a chef's choice day. So I'll just go ahead and get the kids something that, you know, like some French fries, a cheeseburger, stuff like that. So, right. and then I also, I do my own frozen yogurts, different fruits I make with mint and stuff like that, which they okay. love. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I, I mean, I carry on. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm in the kitchen. I have a small kitchen. I do have a guy to do the do the dishes for me and everything. He will assist me as far as them putting the you know getting the food to the warmer and stuff. Okay. But I do all of the cooking and um, uh, it's being so the the kitchen is so it, it's really small. But like I said, it's just enough. I mean, I have everything I need to do, everything I need to do. We have our storerooms. I have a, a abundance of refrigerators and freezers because we can't get a walk-in. But now we're um, expanding the school, so it's a possibility that I'll probably get that walk-in. And it's just about, I have the greatest boss in the world. David Kasevich is wonderful. Anything that I need or I ask him for, he gets it for me. Now, will you be able to maybe hire a, another staff member to help? I mean, if they're expanding the school, are they adding more students, or is it just going to be the They're facility? going to add more students. They're going to add more students. So, therefore, once that building is built, then I'm pretty sure I will be able to hire somebody. Because I'm, con- I was like, I'm concerned. I would come down there and help. <laughs> if that's the case. You know, I was like, good night. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> for for the people that don't know, Miss Debbie and I have met during a couple summers where I worked for uh, the Vetri Community Partnership in Philadelphia, and we took over a kitchen at Gerard College in order to serve lunch to the campers, the breakfast and lunch to the kids at, that were coming to camp every day. And yes. Chef Debbie got on my radar because her salads were my favorite part of the day. Like I I still can't make salads as good as her. I'm not going to lie. I mean, salads and salad dressing. I mean, because I think I, I mean, to this day, I still use some of the recipes that I saw her make on occasion for my own salads. But it was just you knew from I knew from the as soon as I tasted some of those dressings that I was like, OK, so she is a big fish in a small pond and somebody <laughs> needs to get her her own space like ASAP. And so I remember me and Brandon used to talk about like, how can we extract her from this situation and get her into her own kitchen because I mean it was just like if she's doing this this way in these under these circumstances if she had more if she had more control over menus and staff and everything else what could this really look like so we were more than excited to figure out a way to get you into your own kitchen because it was like there is just no way that people should I mean no one everybody should know about like how talented you were and what you could do and I knew for I knew like watching you cook that that was one of the things where you could tell it was like generations of women who have cooked before you just kind of passing down all their skills and all their talents now you said your mom was a chef my grandmother was a chef and okay. my mother, my mother just cooked and she worked in, she worked in a restaurant before, but okay. she, she, but she just cooked and it was nothing that she couldn't cook. Now, where did your grandmother cook? She was the down South in Georgia. Of course. Uh, mm. <laughs> I was like, where everybody's grandmama cooks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what restaurant it was. It was so, such a long time. She even wrote a cookbook oh, and my, okay. and, and my sister had found it at home because she had my grandmother had moved up here and uh my sister had found the cookbook and misplaced the cookbook i'm like i need that cookbook (laughs) you do we (laughs) all need this cookbook yes (laughs) i need her to go find it now your sister worked in the kitchen in the summer too didn't she she did yeah my baby sister 
Yep, I was like, we need her to find this book, and we need to go ahead and make sure that if you know what, whatever we can all get our hands on collectively, I'd appreciate it. So you know, do me a favor. I'm like, uh, I need my hands on this cookbook. Now, is there something that you st- or do you still cook most of your like your grandmother's or your mother's recipes? Oh yeah, I do that, especially like for my uh, Sunday mass and for my caterings. I do I do the homemade gravy, you know, the sm- and the smothered chicken and the stuffed fish and all that stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, now, talk to me about the stuffed fish, cause um, yeah. yeah. I mean, you ain't got to give away no goods and no secrets, but like, what's your general like? What kind of fish do you use? I still use the um swai, the white fish. Oh, okay. I use that and um what they call it, Pegasus. Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I use that and I stuff it with shrimp, peppers, and onions. Wow, and that's a family recipe you saying? <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, okay. Is would that be in your grandmother's cookbook by any chance? <laughs> it just may be. It just okay. may be. But I le- I learned it from I know my mom learned her cooking from her mother. Okay. And I learned my cooking from my mother. Oh yeah. Now how did your grandmother end up in did she did she come to Philadelphia initially or was she just head this way and end up in like Chicago and then got married and ended up in New Jersey or New mm-hmm. Philadelphia? No, my grandmother always lived uh, in Georgia. Okay. And um as she was getting older, she she was living it by herself down here and as she was getting over older, my mother wanted her to come and live with her. Oh, okay. So, okay. so we went and got her, and she she lived with us. My grandmother lived to be ninety three. Oh wow! Okay, ninety three. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. then she she passed away, and unfortunately, I lost my mother three years ago. I remember that. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that. Now, how did your mother end up in Philadelphia? Uh, she, my father, my father brought okay. her here from Dale okay. South. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Uh-huh. Now, do you still have family in this uh, down south in, in in Georgia, or is everybody pretty much this way? No, I, I still have family. Um, my um fathers, sisters. I have a lot of aunts still down there, and a abundance of cousins down south. Oh, and I think that's just about. I think that's every. That's all of us at this point. Now, did your like your father's mother and like your grandmother on that side? Did she do a lot of cooking? Did you spend any time with her in the kitchen? With my grandmother, not no, no, no. no. I didn't okay. do that, no. But I spent okay. a lot with my mom. All yep. right, all right. Now, what mm-hmm. what recipes have you kind of tweaked or put your own spin on after oh, learning them? Every last one of them. <laughs> every last one of them. <laughs> my motto is is to not just cook food. Because of this is what the recipe say. You cook food, you want people to like the food. Right. And enjoy it for the taste. So I I tweak it all. All right. Okay. Do you have a specialty? Like, is there one recipe that you kind of, like, you, you that was like the first thing you put your hands on and was like, we're going to work this thing a little bit more till I'm happy with it? Well, as far as, and this is a, it's not even meat. This this is the cowboy beans. Oh. I had to change. I had to change that up. I had to really make it cowboy. Make okay. it barbecue. Barbecue with some some jalapeno peppers and you know make it like the cowboys. If it's cowboy, make it like a cowboy. Okay. It, now was that is that was that a family recipe? Is that something your your mom used to make all the time? Oh no. I thought you were talking no, no. about now that this was a veteran recipe. I had oh, to change yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a there was a couple of times I had to be like, ooh, we're not gonna make it that way. We're gonna have to do something no, else. We're um, gonna do something totally different. <laughs> yeah. We don't want the kids to get the food and say, Oh, I don't like this. This is a right. lot of stuff. They might say even like the broccoli. They was for oh, I don't like this. I don't want it. So I tweaked it. Okay. And they eat it. They they ask for it now. Good, good. All they right. Ask for it. All the vegetables, not a vegetable that I fix them now that they don't eat. They eat every vegetable. Oh wow! Now for you personally, like I because we when we met, you were primarily doing like most of those salads and those that salad dressing from scratch. Now, how, did, is that something that 
your mother used to do? Or is that something that as you became an adult and started cooking more and more and like getting in the kitchen more, like, did you start to kind of go into more like vegetarian cooking and like adding more greens to the plate? Or was that just the way your family always ate? No, I just started doing it. Just like I I mentioned earlier, I'm just creative. It's just like, I can't go and just do what what I, you know, plan to do. Right, right. My mind, then once I start cooking, my mind just start going, and I, I just start creating from there. And, okay. and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Sometimes oh, wow. I have to just stop myself. You, you know, wow. it's just my husband and I here, and I, I get to cooking in here, and you would think I was cooking for a whole family or more. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Now, do you still have all your kids nearby so you can, like, at least have, a you know, with all that food, have people to feed it to? No, my kids are not as close. They will have to, get, uh, you know, take a, a drive or take a bus. Oh, However, okay. what I don't do, what I, what I do cook, and then I'll say, well, you know, well, this will be for tomorrow. So I'll just seal it up and put it in the refrigerator for tomorrow. Gotcha. Or if it's more than that, I'll seal it up and put it in the freezer and just start pulling it out. You know, yeah. especially yeah. on so hot days, I don't have to cook. <laughs> was the school now did you guys cl- did St. John close early or St. James close early because of like COVID-19 or were you able yeah. to finish the school year yeah. okay no I'm out I'm out oh, I've been out since oh. since I've been out now for three months oh wow 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 do you know if you guys are go? are you guys gonna on track to go back in September or we are you out here like the rest of us not sure what they gonna do oh well as a matter of fact St. James is preparing now to open and they, they are open, well, they're on vacation now the, the week. But the week of the 22nd, a few staff will be coming back. Okay. You know, because they, they didn't already started the cleaning and all that stuff like that. Great. But unfortunately, I won't be able to go back right then and there until we're in the green. Oh, okay. All right, you then. Know, did you, you know I had a heart attack. No. Oh, wait, hold up. Back yeah. up. Yep. I had a heart attack on Thanksgiving Day, year before last. Oh, my goodness. 2018, I had a um, massive heart attack. Passed away three times. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. See, the the, the, the universe and the ancestors was like, ma'am, not yet. Not yet. Uh, You you have to be here a little while longer. Hold Uh on. So how how long was your recovery? I don't remember a lot, but I think I was in the hospital for a week. I was in the hospital wow. for a week. I okay. had a heart attack in my kitchen on Thanksgiving Day. Mm-mm. And after that, I, don't, I just remembered saying I'm getting ready to wash up a little bit of dishes. And that was it. I don't remember anything after that. After that, wow, mm-hmm. wow, wow, wow. And, and listen, to Tiffany, I had no, well, I have a stent in my heart now, but I don't have any damage to my heart. See that? Yeah. Uh huh. If y'all don't understand, like <laughs> prayer works, you know. Let me prayer. tell you, <laughs> prayer works. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, because you always ate so well, and always were like, I, I remember you. Everybody like really maintaining your health and paying attention to your health. So I'm like, was mm-hmm. was that like was it more stress related? I think it was stress because okay. okay, in March I lost my mother. Right. And two weeks after my mom died, I lost my brother-in-law. Two weeks after oh, okay. that, I lost my father. So, yeah. And, yeah. and then a couple of months later, you know, that same year, I ended up having that heart attack. And I think wow. it was it was, it was was just the stress of all of that. Of course. Going of on. Course. The doctors always said that I was healthy. They said I was really healthy. And right. I had, you know, no, no problems. A couple of years before that, I had a total hip replacement. So I had to be cleared by the cardiologist, and they told me that everything was fine It put my heart. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm glad you're still here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Wow. So what are you, like, what are you doing now? I mean, because feeding all them folks by yourself, what are you doing to maintain your self-care and your and take care of yourself? 
Okay, my husband and I, we go to the gym when the gym was open. You know, we would do that. But I, hey, we we do have um, exercise machines here, but my bike look at me more than I touch it. But I do a lot of walking. I make sure that I at least get over 4,000 steps a day and the stretching. So I do that, you know, trying to keep myself afloat. Then I just got a call from my doctor because I had to do blood work. And she told me that all my blood work looked good. She said that my high cholesterol, you know, not the high cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. She said my numbers are almost normal. Okay, good, good. All right. Yeah. And I'm no longer, I'm on medication, but I'm no longer on that heart medication. Oh, all right. That's, yeah, that's the kind of progress we like to hear. Um, okay. Okay. Because people don't realize, like, it's specifically for Black women, like, heart disease and heart conditions will take you out, will take us out more than everybody else. That's and I think, right. I think a good part of that is because of the amount of stress we carry, because we care about our, our family and our community so much, and we forget to, like, take care of ourselves or remember that we need to maintain our own our own stress levels in order to be here to do all the work we want to do so oh girl thank you I was like what I'm sorry excuse me that's news uh, <laughs> oh yeah uh-huh. and I'm better than I was before oh, good. I, I'm, in, I'm in good health I got good doctors you know my cardiologist uh, he's he's great and I, I see like a series of doctors I mean, they always call, check up, or leave a message if I need to on my uh, health thing. So, okay. um, so far, so good. I think okay. I spoke with five of them today. Oh Lord! <laughs> okay, so that means that what you won't, you probably won't be retiring for what another twenty years. I'm not trying to retire, not okay. at all, not at all. I don't want to. Re- I'm I'm not ready to retire yet. I don't want to go out on nobody's disability yet. You got I that right. Wanna- I want to work until I, until it's time for me to sit down. Okay. I, I like to hear that. And I'm sure the folks at St. James will appreciate that. Now, is there any, are there any like personal projects you get into any type of like volunteer work or are you just really spending most of your time at the school? I spend most of my time at school, but a lot of it, I do caterings, but I haven't done any since the COVID. But at work, I mean, I'm always doing caterings. A lot of the stuff that that I do there are a lot of volunteer. Okay. Every time, you know, if they need food outside of my normal caterings there and my regular lunch, I'll just go ahead and throw the, you know, do the food. And it doesn't, you know, I don't get paid okay. for it, but I'll just okay. fix it for them. Okay. Now, were they able to maintain the school, like school lunch or school breakfast just for the community, or did they close their facilities altogether? Oh no, they out on the Clearfield Street. They was doing it every day because the guy that was doing the dishes for me, yeah, uh, he would just go and they they would get some stuff and he would pack them up, pack up lunches for the kids okay. to come and pick up every day. Oh, that's and now great. they're just doing it on Tuesdays and Thursdays now. Okay, at least it's, at least mm-hmm. something's available. I think people forget, you know, at the very beginning when they were closing a, a bunch of facilities and, and sending kids home early from school, like we had to figure out how to keep those food programs going because a lot yeah. of kids that's, that's the only meal they get. So yeah, I, I, yeah, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I'm like the yeah. more I think I think the more opportunities we have to to do that, the better off most people, especially families who can't really afford to be out here. Exactly. Buying food and stuff like that. So do you have any new menu items for like the new school year that you're trying to add or are you, no. are you going to, go ahead. I am. I'm thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about what before, but before I go back to work, I will have at least a week's, a week's worth of new menu. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any, so any uh, particular inspiration you're pulling from, or is it just you, your creativity kind of just, you're letting that go wild a little bit until you find yep. something you're happy. All right. Exactly. Letting yeah. that kick right okay. on in. It hasn't felt me yet. So I'm going to stick with that. All right. Okay. Now I know you always kept a notebook. 
Is there any, <laughs> any chance of that notebook becoming a cookbook is all I'm asking. Yes. Remember, Tiffany, you and I, we talked about that before. We and did. I, we did. Man, I, because I don't know how to get started with that. So, and we talked about that and we, we had, you had started up a website for me. But yes, then I somehow did. we, we <laughs> lost contact and I don't know where it's at and I don't, you know, it didn't, it didn't really go far. Right. Okay. Well, look, let me be the first to apologize for that. I don't even know what my life was looking like at that point. I just knew that what you were doing was important and it needed other people needed to know about it. So in that vein, I am more than happy to revisit it. And I know some folks who are uh, fantastic at writing and probably know a few cookbook publishers and things like that. So we can absolutely have an offside conversation about that again and just come revisit that whole idea because I still think you, uh, you absolutely should put all of that work into the world and make it available. And yes, and if we can maybe uh, find your grandmother's cookbook. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm so telling we can you, add boy. that too. I mean, exactly. Exactly. What was the, um, I mean, what was the what was the favorite thing? What was your favorite thing that your grandmother used to make? Okay, the frying pan cornbread. I just mastered it myself. Okay, well, talk to me about that. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, um, and you know, it's just cornmeal, and uh, you get your you get your cornmeal and some water. Mix it, get that batter going. You need a cast iron frying pan because you want it to get piping hot. And once it's piping hot, you put that thing in there and let it cook, flip, let that side cook, and then you, and you're done. It's the best. It tastes it tastes so good with with collard greens oh, okay. and and that gravy that I was telling you about. Right. Oh man. Okay. Huh? I was like, okay, um, you're right. Uh, now, did your family like celebrate Juneteenth or or any of those holidays? Like the uh, the I think yeah, Juneteenth is on the 19th of June. Oh, like, it's June. usually yeah, it usually falls right around like Father's Day. My brother's birthday is the 19th. So did you did your family down south celebrate it? I don't know because okay. I haven't had you know haven't talked with them. But I know my granddaughter. She's doing stuff. She's out here helping the com- community. She's feeding the homeless. She's running her own little catering thing out of her home every oh. weekend. You know, she's doing that, and then she's going. She's just going, going out. You know, with the Black Lives Matter, and yeah, she, yeah, okay. she's working on that. She's doing good, and uh, she she's. I think she was out Strawberry Mansion um, Monday, and feeding the homeless. I was thinking about your grandmother's recipes and like what, because of what Juneteenth is and how people celebrate. And I was just like, those recipes would be so nice to like, for people to have, to be able to like make some really authentic Southern foods for themselves, for their families at the, for the holiday. Okay. Well, um, like a lot of them, you know, like I said, my mom, learned the cooking from my grandmother and I learned it from my mother. Yeah. So it's, it's still a lot of the, it's like the recipes like collard greens. A lot of people don't know how to do a Southern collard green. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and school the people for a minute. Okay. Let the people know how it can get done. Okay. With the peppers, the onions, the little bit of vinegar, some Worcestershire sauce. How about, and then, and then we go in the smoked meat. Some people don't like pork, and some people don't like, t- you know, the turkey. So you can use yeah. smoked turkey parts or smoked neck bones and stuff like that. And you just go ahead and you cook them and let them simmer down. You don't use a lot of water. You don't need a lot of water. And just simmer them down and, you know, add your little seasons to your taste. Okay. Oh, man, a little bit of hot sauce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, ooh, the vinegar. What kind of vinegar are we talking about? I like a rice vinegar. Oh, okay. And if you don't have the rice vinegar, then you just go ahead and put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there. Okay. Now, are you mixing the green? Are you doing like collards, turnips, and uh, all of them mixed together? All of them mixed together. Okay. Because I know my grandmother was a big fan of the turnips and the turnip green. Yeah. Yeah. And the mustard. So, yeah. And the mustard. But I like to mix them all together. Okay. All of them. And what's your cleaning method? I wash mine with a little bit of detergent. Okay. All right. And a a good rinse. 
and 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 rinse them with salt. The salt to get all the debris off of them. Okay. See, this is what I mean by school the people. Okay. So y'all heard, you know, you're rinsing with the salt. You're uh-huh. rinsing with the salt. Don't mess around. You, now, do you take the rib out of all of them or just the collars? Not all of them, because uh, okay. those those ribs is good. The rib got the most got a lot of flavor in them. You right. But I don't put a I don't put a lot of rib in there, but I leave I, I leave rib in there because she got it. That's the flavor. Okay. Okay, so now, mm-hmm. now, now about that smothered chicken, because I, I don't want to put your gravy secrets out here in the streets uh, without mm-hmm. people paying for it. But that's right. <laughs> but that smothered chicken, I guess, what's your technique for the smothered chicken? Not so much ingredients, but what's your technique for the smothered chicken? Okay, once you fry the fry, you fry your chicken, or you can use leftover fried chicken. That's the best. Leftover fried chicken. Oh, so you using the leftover? Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's already is it, it, it's marinated now. That that chicken, that fried chicken is leftover. It is marinated, and it got all the flavor and juices in it. Okay. So now and then and, and all you have to do is just throw it in your gravy, so, and 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 just simmer it down. And what do you typically serve that with? Rice. Okay. Okay, you rice have and some corn or some rice corn and some college greens. Okay. Now, is there any particular rice dishes that you have in your repertoire that you typically pull out? No, with that, on that, with the, I just use plain rice for that. Okay. A plain white rice. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. And um, yeah. do you do you have a? And I'm I'm try, like I said, I'm not trying to give away all the goods without people paying for it. But do you have a rice peel off that you do? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. I I'm do. Gonna... A lot of people like rice peel off. Well, the, the original rice peel off is onions and garlic. Well, I like my rice peel off with carrots, onions. Garlic and some celery. Oh, okay. That's my rice peel off. Okay. It's got to be mm. real flavorful. I mean, real flavorful. Are you using like a vegetable stock or a chicken stock or just some I, plain use, water? I use I use vegetable stock. Okay. All right. Well, I won't. Like I said, I, I won't keep picking at the genius, but we will figure out a way to get these <laughs> recipes up for the people. Because even if we do a little online cookbook and people got to pay to get access to it, I'm just saying. Um, let's do it let's, let's do, do it, it. Let's do it. I need yes, your ma'am. Help. yes ma'am I'm, I'm on it we ain't got nothing but time right now sitting in the house <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all we got that's all, all we got, got. three months so, and went by I, 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 let's do something Love. before you okay. run before you run back to Texas oh uh, lord have mercy so yeah we will, <laughs> I will find a way to get your notes and your notebooks and all the other stuff and, and start putting some things together and yeah, now for your salad game, are you making as many salads as you used to and like your dressings from scratch as you used to? I mean, because I always thought that you should bottle them bad boys and go I know, and sell them. A, well, St. James is talking about doing that too because somebody's supposed to be do- donating a store down oh. the street and they want me and they want me to bottle up the dressings so they can, yeah. so the kids can sell them out of the store. <laughs> You should do that. You should, you should do that. I'm not, and when they do it, just let me know because I want to be able to buy a, a case of something. Um, I hear you. I hear you. I don't because I I don't think I can express enough. I don't think I can impress on the people enough how delicious these dressings are. They're not overly sweet. They're always beautifully balanced. They have a little bit of acid in them. They are just I look. I'm just saying. I'm just Thank saying they, they always bless my soul uh, when, they, when, we, when I had when we had salad. So, yes, when you get the chance, like I said, again, I will make myself available for like making some labels or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, look, I'll have nothing but time. You, okay. when you get some time, you have my number. You give me a call and I am available. Yes. Okay. All right. Cause then yeah. I, and, the thing, and I, and I know because all the people listening to this, to this interview right now have now heard me say, <laughs> and they're going to be like, Tiff, so what about the recipes <laughs> and where is this? Know, out? Right? <laughs> so, it's, so now I have, I look now I got to at least have some accountability about it. So yes. Okay. Well, let's do that. All right. Um, well, ma'am. I also have, um, I, I do a homemade, um, tartar sauce. Oh, See, and I'm always, I always struggle to find a good tartar sauce, so I usually opt out mm-hmm. if someone offers it because it's never good. 
Oh, you gonna love this one. You can you sit there lick your finger. You lick your fingers, you don't even oh, girl, let me okay, tell you. Okay, okay, good enough. Good enough. Now is that <laughs> again, is is that something that you have a like a recipe for that we can like we'll pull together a little something, something so that people can be like, okay, I might not be able to get this bottled part of sauce right now, but I'm gonna go on to make it. Yep, right out of your refrigerator. Staples oh. is already in your kitchen. Okay. Oh, you don't okay. have to go get nothing. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, I have your phone number. We're going to make some things happen. We're going to make some things happen. <laughs> All <laughs> right, Tim. Don't, don't forget me. I will not forget <laughs> you. You are on the list. You are on the list. I promise. Because and I, I'm, I'm sure the, the website is somewhere in my archive somewhere. And we will pull that on out and make some things happen. So, yeah, I'm on it. I'm all on it. Uh, but, yes, but I appreciate you hopping on with me. I mean, I always tell people I, I can go for a couple of hours, but I try to only take up an hour of people's time. But it was it's always so nice to talk to you and catch up with you. You as well. I will not let it be as long next time. I mean, the lady didn't have a whole heart attack since the last time I talked to her. I just, I mean, y'all. Hello. Yep. See, I'm here for a reason. I know. I'm like, I'm like, me for a reason. reason. I know. I'm like, oh no, I can't let that happen again. But yes, <laughs> oh, but, no. but thank you so much. Is there any way to is it uh this um St. James do any type of like program that we can donate to or any way that we can the uh, me oh, and the yeah. audience can support you in any particular way that you want to yeah. let us know about? Yes. Just go to St. James dot org. Okay. okay, you know what I'll do? I'll send I'll send it to you. That, okay. uh, the link. Yeah. And we always said that's how we the school run on their donations, and we need all the donations that anybody can give us. So go to the J James site and and while you're there, look up uh, S- Chef Anthony there, and they'll show yeah. you all of all of the things that, uh, about me. You you heard of Lauren Carey? Yeah. yeah. She wrote a story on me at St. James. Oh, wow. Okay. we. I will make sure we pull that up too. And so people can read about all the work you're doing there and that we can, so, you know, find a way to support and make sure that your work gets done. And hopefully we can raise enough money to hire you some help. Cause look, I mean, I know you dope enough to do all of it by yourself. Don't mean you should. So, <laughs> I, like, I, I need somebody you know to get on over there. I'm just so used to it. I mean, hey, I I, I, you know, I already, I don't even prep stuff. I just come in wow. here and do it. The only thing that I do prep is uh, like the frozen chicken and meat and stuff like that. I'll take that out a day ahead of time. But okay. everything else is no, I don't do no prepping for no, no vegetables or anything. All my <laughs> stuff is done within that day. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, do you ever have um, just like interns or older students come like who might be in culinary school or who want to help? I started a program with a couple of the, the kids that, in my school. And then okay. we have some from Crystal Ray that'll come and they, they're coming. I started a little internship with them because we do have some kids at my okay. school that wants to be chef. So once a week, oh, wow. I'll pull. Okay one or two kids from each classroom once a week and I'll let them cook. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Cause I was going to say, I know CCAP, the nonprofit in Philly that does, um, that works with students who want to go to, who aspire to go into like culinary school or, and they also, I think they do scholarships and things like that. That might be a nice little partnership so they can kind of sit under your tutelage and get some, get some experience and some hours really working in oh, real time and working in good. the real kitchen. Yeah. So I've, they have a Philadelphia location for CCAP. And so it's like a thousand high school students that they prep for like restaurant and hospitality jobs. And they also prepare Mm -hmm. them if they want to go to culinary school as well. So that might be a really nice partnership for you as well, because it'll get you like just some, uh, some extra hands. And then uh, you can teach these these babies about some real cooking and what it, you know, and what that looks like. Cause I know a big part of, I think the, the culinary challenges we have is that most, most students believe they can only work in a restaurant 
And for me, I'm always like, there are so many opportunities to work in food and they're not, and most of them are not in a restaurant. And so like to put them in a school and allow them to like participate in a, a, in a mm-hmm. program, a, a school program, that'll give them some other options as far as what they can actually do in a way and ways to serve their community as well. So I'll see what I can find out. Cause you know, for me, even if you get somebody okay. to show up once, once or twice a week to learn something, that'll, uh, that'll again, give you a little space to breathe. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and like I said, so you can pass on all that glorious information that's in your brain. I, I would love to share that. Okay. And I also uh, I also have a garden at my job, too. And I have Ooh. someone that that goes and harvests the stuff for me. See, and that's always such a great, a great thing for like students, like especially culinary students to learn how to use and how to utilize is like community garden or garden um, fresh produce yeah. from a garden. So that would be um, right. Yeah, man. Okay, I got ideas. I got ideas and thoughts. I have your email address and your phone number now. So we will talk about what we can do with getting these recipes out into the world and getting your food out here in the streets because I think the people need to know. At the very least, it'll give me an opportunity to get the recipe for this gravy. And um, you know, (laughs) and there you go. So, yeah. I know you're just saying. I understand. (laughs) But thank you, ma'am. I will let you go and I will let you know when the episode is up and you can listen to it and share it with people and folks. And I'm sure, I mean, I know I'm always interested in talking to, like I said, all the black women who are out here feeding the people all the time. And it's just not something that people think about, like who's in these hospitals and schools and institutions feeding the community? Because we really focus on restaurants all the time. so few of us that actually do that work. We're so we do so much of the other work in food. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, my favorite people get high that get get, you know, their stories are elevated and that people know who you are and what you do. So um so we can support all the work. So yes. Yeah, so thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Great talking to you. And I'll be waiting to hear from you soon. That is all for this week's episode. Thank you to our guests for spending some time with us. And thank you for listening in and for being a part of the Fly is Click in podcasting. If you love these conversations, be sure to download, subscribe, comment, and share. You can get further connected with the Afros and Knives community by following us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget to visit our website, afrosandknives.com, and sign up for our newsletter. Afros and Knives does this work only with the financial support of our Patreon community. To become a patron, please visit patreon.com backslash Afros and Knives and pledge your monthly support. We are working on expanding into video as well as offering patron-only content this year and you don't want to miss out. Until next week, may you be happy, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you be at peace. Thank you.